Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the SDS podcast. S for studious, D for diligent, and S for sexy. My name is Eurosin, or Euro for short. And my name is David. The topic of today is in the field of biology, what some may call one of the most revolutionary discoveries of them all. Yes, and that is the discovery of, drumroll please, penicillin! You may have heard that word before. To my rap fans tuning in to the new NLE Choppa album, cue the music. Or not. Me and David are going to describe to you what it means. Firstly, some background information. The discovery of this antibiotic is typically credited to a Scottish scientist by the name of Alexander Fleming. September of 1928, it was his first day back at his lab after a long vacation when he discovered that he had left out a petri dish with a bacteria called Staphylococcus inside. He must have felt angry at himself for being so careless, but he didn't realize what he would come to discover in the minutes following. Staphylococcus. I remember when Miss Brzezinski taught us that term. Staphylo, as in ball-like clusters, and caucus, as in circular in shape? Yes, sir. Glad you've been paying attention in class, Euro. Anyways, what happened is a group of spores from the mold called Penicillium notodum had drifted onto a petri dish from somewhere else in the lab by mere coincidence. And a strong enough breeze, I betcha. Spores. Yet another connection to biology class. Miraculously enough, Fleming saw that the mold was surrounded by a clear ring where the bacteria had been unable to develop. Just picture you're in a room full of women. <laughs> you got jokes, bro. At the cellular level, Fleming was observing what is known as a microbial defense system. You see, the penicillium mold constantly produces a compound called penicillin. Make sure not to get it mixed up in order to defend itself from any threats such as nearby bacterial colonies which might consume its resources. Penicillin destroys all sorts of bacteria by messing up their synthesis in their cell walls. These walls get their strength from a thick coat of sugars and amino acids that are repeatedly being broken down and rebuilt. Penicillin binds to one of the compounds which weaves this coat together and prevents the wall from being reconstructed at a critical phase. On top of this process, penicillin also releases highly reactive molecules that do additional damage to the bacteria. Eventually, the cell structure breaks down completely. Kind of like David when he talks to girls other than his mom. <laughs> Thanks for stealing my joke, Euro. This attack that penicillin has is extremely efficient at killing all sorts of bacteria, whether it be in a petri dish like Fleming observed or in the human body. Wouldn't it kill the cells of the human body too, you may ask? Aha! Thankfully our cells don't have a cell wall for penicillin to break down. What a wonderful day to be in the kingdom of Animalia, wouldn't you say? So, is that all? Nothing else? Just a happy ending? Well, not exactly. Eventually, Alexander Fleming named his substance penicillin and published his findings in British Journal of Experimental Pathology in 1929. However, he was unable to isolate and purify the compound, and his discovery did not initially attract much attention. It wasn't until the early 1940s that penicillin was mass-produced and used as a medicine. A team of researchers led by Howard Flory and Ernst Chain at the University of Oxford, with the help of American biochemist Norman Heatley, succeeded in isolating and purifying penicillin, making it possible to produce large quantities of the antibiotic. They conducted successful trials on mice and then human patients, demonstrating the effectiveness of penicillin in treating bacterial infections. In 1945, Fleming, Flory, and Chain were jointly awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their work on penicillin. Today, penicillin and its derivatives are widely used antibiotics, and they continue to save countless lives every year. You know what's crazy? And while we're on this topic, my auntie actually had an ear infection once, and thankfully, the doctors prescribed her penicillin, and she was able to cure herself. Just one of the countless stories of this miracle drug, eh? Hey? You wouldn't be 100% right. While penicillin is an amazing antibiotic, bacteria, like all other organisms, can overcome its effects through natural selection. You're in fact correct, which is why doctors are consistently working on developing this drug while also making sure they're not overprescribing it. On a final note for the viewers, if you are paying attention, comment down below the person's name credited for the discovery of penicillin for a chance to win a $5,000 giveaway. Hey Euro, it looks like we're running out of time. 
had a great time talking to you. We'd like to thank everyone for tuning in and we'll catch you all next time. Peace.